it ruins you for yeah. church as usual. Oh, hey. Mm, come it ruins on. you. Yeah. That regular old mundane Christian, read a verse a day to keep wow. the devil away, sit in church, go because my mama went, my grandmother went, this is what we do. All of that goes away okay. because you're hungering mm. for what you know you've experienced before, actually sensing the voice Beautiful. of God, His presence near you. Listen, sometimes hearing God is less about having a specific word and more about just the nearness of His presence. Yeah. Discerning the voice of God. Today we're going to unpack that. So why is this subject matter something that is really important? It is important because this facet of our faith is what separates our faith from every other so-called faith on the face of the earth. Okay. That our God lives. Yeah. He's alive and he speaks to us. We have an actual relationship with him. And that, that's so casually thrown around this whole relationship thing. But what good is any relationship if nobody's talking to each other? Right. If there's no communication, if there's not um, a, a connectedness that is ongoing and continual. So this issue of discerning the voice of God, first of all, believing that he does speak, but second of all, trusting in the fact that as his kids, we have the privilege to actually discern and dis uh, have a distinction of his voice between all the other voices that also want to get a word in edgewise. That's something that really can change and transform the trajectory of your entire Christian experience. Okay, let's let's lay a little bit of the ground rule in your in your world. We're you're our guest today, you and Jerry. Uh, Jerry, jump in anytime you want to. You're much bigger than I am. You can, you can do that jump anytime. in anytime you want. Yeah. And you know, so, you're a miracle worker that you got him on the show. Jerry doesn't he's want... He's my buddy. Come on, I man. I know y'all are buddies. You guys are just going to have a good time. We're going we're gonna to discern the voice of God. Now, let me ask you a question. In the Priscilla, Jerry world, yeah. uh, does God speak audibly? Does he only speak through his word? Does he speak... How? how what are the different ways that you certainly know of that yeah. God speaks to you? Um, I've never heard the audible voice of God. Babe, have you? Did I, I miss something? I have not. No, but not no, yet? No, not yet. But I think there is something internal yeah. in you that, you that you feel the presence of God and it lines up with scripture, which confirms, okay, this is what I'm hearing. That's right. So the okay. Holy Spirit of God illumines scripture. The book is alive and he causes the, the old presets of scripture to have a nowness and a newness that applies and intersects with our personal experience. So as Jerry mentioned, the Holy Spirit in us confirms and corroborates and connects with the, the, the word of God and causes it to intersect with our experience. So that, that verse that has something to do with David and Goliath all of a sudden, it's not about David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. It actually applies to what you're facing right then in your life, and you understand it as a directive straight, straight from God. And then there's the conviction, you know, the conviction of the Holy Spirit, that, that green light of ease and peace that says go, yeah. that, that yellow light of warning and uneasiness that says hold up a minute till you get clarity. Mm -hmm. And then that red light that is a straight up no, there's no peace, there's confusion, there's dissension. That's the Holy Spirit's way of telling you, no, don't go there. There's a better yes for you if you'll just wait and be patient. Have you ever heard the still small voice of the Lord in a phrase, in an impression? Have, what Describe some of what is in discerning the voice of God, how, how the Lord speaks or how this conversation unfolds with you. Yes, well, most of the time, most of the time, God speaks to me through his word. It is exactly what I described. It is reading through a portion of scripture. And on that day, it's like the Holy Spirit has taken out a highlighter and has highlighted this verse you have seen a million times before. Mm. But on that day, it leaps up off the page and it grips you. That's the only way I can really describe it yeah. is that it grips you in the depths of your soul and causes you to pause for a moment because it, it seems to be literally speaking to something that's happening in your life. Most of the time, th that is the voice of God. We have discounted, I think, the power of scripture because if we say we want to hear from God and we never actually read the love letter that he wrote to us, we don't want to really hear from God. Mm -hmm. And we rarely will because the canon of scripture is not only, it not only provides the boundary into which everything God says to us will fall because he'll never say anything that manipulates 
the scriptures or his character as revealed in the scriptures. So it not only gives us the boundary, but it also provides for us the number one mechanism through which we have the privilege to hear him in the first place. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so start us out on, because um, I know so many people wonder, oh, you know, how can I hear God's voice for ourselves? And I or know, trust it. Or, or trust, you know, or yeah. trust it. How can I trust God's voice when I do hear it? Is that really him? Is it me? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, well, let me, let me just start by putting a little grace over this entire situation. The reality is that sometimes you do not know until hindsight that what you heard was the voice of God. Mm. There you go. And the reality is that there is grace and mercy to cover our missteps. And that the Lord in his graciousness toward us, his knowledge of our frailty and our humanity, for the willing heart who desires to do his will, even when we make mistakes, he allows them to become our greatest teachers for hearing mm. him correctly in the Beautiful. future. He does not hold it against us because we've misstepped along the way. So um, uh, just grace for those of us yes. who have ever heard God wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we Wish we could get it get it right. One of the people I sort of interviewed when I was first writing that book many, you know, over a decade ago uh, now, I interviewed Henry Blackaby, hmm. who wrote Experiencing God. Yes. And I, you know, had my notebook out, my pen. I was going to take a seminary class from Henry <laughs> Blackaby, you know. And I said, how do you know when you're hearing God? And he gave me lots of incredible answers to that question, but really he summed it up this way. He said, the more you know God, the more clearly you can hear God. Mm. Mm. There was really nothing for me to write down because it boiled down to, Priscilla, it's simple, he said. The more you know him, the more clearly you can hear him. So the reason why we go to the scriptures, the reason why we have quiet time, the reason why we fellowship with other believers who are going to help us remain encouraged in our faith is because we're just trying to get to know God. Yeah. When you know his character, when you know um, the nuances of what he does say and what he wouldn't say because of how he spoke to our forefathers, because of how he handled circumstances previously with people in the scriptures who were going through some of the same scenarios we're going through now. When you see his personality and his character, then you know when you hear the voice of fear, uh-uh, that don't sound like my God. Mm. When you hear the voice of your ego, pride, jealousy, divisiveness stepping in, all of that stuff that in our flesh is also trying to get a word in edgewise, we can quickly, quickly pinpoint the voice of a stranger because if we know God, the more clearly we can discern and dis divide his voice from a stranger. Okay, now you talked about seeking God's provision and his blessings on our life and then knowing who, who what his character is. Talk about that because I found that fascinating. Yes, so God's blessing um, and I believe his provisions are a corroboration of his word to us. So in other words, while in the Old Testament, there were external means as a primary way for folks to hear God, in the New Testament, and now in this time frame as well, we have something they didn't have. We have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So the primary way he has speak to us has, that he speaks to us has changed, but his goal hasn't. His goal is still for his kids to hear his voice. So he's chosen the Holy Spirit of God to be the, the way that we... Uh, hear and know what it is that his will is for our life, but he still uses external means, his provision, his blessings, his aligning of providence. Some people would call it luck or coincidence. No, it's the aligning of God's handiwork in our life to confirm that what we're sensing on the inside is indeed how he's aligning uh, the direction for our life. To just F.B. Myers, a great theologian, put it this way, when a big uh, 747 is getting ready to land on a runway, well, well, the plane better not just be looking for one light somewhere to land. Better not just look for two lights somewhere to, to land. There better be several lights that are, uh, that are lining a runway so that that 747 knows exactly to where land. The bigger the decision that you have to make, the more you need to trust in the mercy of God's external confirmation that aligns for you where to land that plane in your life. Beautiful. Um, and, and so that's important that we have external blessings, provision, coincidence that really shows us the sovereignty of God aligning. I'll give you an example. I was just telling you guys before we started um, airing that I that I started to, to look at this Discerning the Voice of God book, the material that we've been privileged to be able to develop through the years on the topic. And I just started, you know, how the Lord puts layers of maturity on a message, the more you grow in Him. Aren't we so grateful yeah, sure. that He lets us grow and mature and learn from our mistakes? And I thought, I was just starting to feel like, you know, it might be time, especially with the, the video series that we've done in regards to this. It was taped 11 years ago, right. so it kind of looks dated now. And I thought we might need to do something different with that at some point. This was going to be my lazy year where I just kind of <laughs> sat down and didn't write too much. Um, but at the same time, I started to sense that on the inside, maybe we need to do that 
at some point. One of my publishers called to say, you know, let's redo the Discerning the Voice of God Bible study. Then the publisher of this particular book called and said, hey, you know what, maybe we're going to put a, a, a reface this and go ahead and freshen up the material here and the new insights that the Lord has given you. So there were two things, two lights there that kind of corroborated what I was already sensing on the inside. And then Matt and Lori Crouch called <laughs> and said, you know what, Priscilla? We think that we would love to offer this to, to people who want to know how to discern God's leading. That third light wow. was the confirmation for me that what it was I was sensing on the inside, the Lord was very clear, clearly giving me a light bulb to let me know this would be his direction for me. A number of years ago, um, when laws were different, um, today, um, if we're hiring somebody, here at Trinity Broadcasting, we can say, by the way, you're, you know, TBN is a Christian organization, might have noticed. Um, are you a Christian? We can say that. Mm -hmm. That is, but there, if you wind the hands of clock back about 30 years, you couldn't say that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You couldn't make somebody tell you whether they were a Christian or not in, in the application process. It was a different rules. Well, my dad, uh, when he in the early days, somebody called and Trinity Broadcasting is, you know, under the authorization of the Federal Communications Commission. We have employees here that make sure we stay in tune with those policies and procedures and rules and all that kind of stuff. <coughs> we have different sets of employees that do lighting and sound and this and that. But my dad was, of course, the general manager. And, and somebody called and my dad's on the phone. Uh, Mr. Crouch, you have to be a Christian to work at your channel. He had the phone in his hand. And he went, yeah, <laughs> and wanted to say yes. And the discerning voice of God at that point was literally, <laughs> he couldn't say the word yes. So he went, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> and tried to say yes again and couldn't. And he said, hold a second, put the call on hold and said, you know, just kind of went, what, you know, Lord? And he clicked the button back and went, well, sir, I suppose you don't have to be a Christian to work at our channel, but you might want to be. <laughs> uh, you know, much like if you were applying for a Spanish language channel, you might want to know how to speak Spanish. Yeah. And the guy went, hmm, well, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, mm -hmm. I get that. Uh, oh, by the way, if you'd have said yes, I was going to file, uh, you know, against your license at the Federal Communications Commission. So my dad's, you know, hit over the head with a ball peen hammer from the Lord that moment was that was God having a conversation by literally not allowing him to make a mistake. And see, here's the thing that I love about this story about your dad and the story about your parents at, at the very beginning of this. What I love is their willingness to not push past those moments of restraint when they mm. sense the, that, that warning, that conviction to not put the foot call on hold, but then pick it back up only to get that yes out that they wanted to, that he mm -hmm. wanted to get out. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with most of us, that rebellious streak that we all have, yeah. that when we sense that conviction, that warning, don't say that to your spouse. Not, not right now. That's not the time to say that to your spouse. <laughs> you had to say the spouse thing. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you know, when you're in heated fellowship with your spouse and you, you know, sometimes as wives, we get ready because we know what we're going to say. It's going <laughs> to shut this whole thing down. And we're going to win this battle. We plan to win the battle. And then we feel that warning, that conviction, mm. that's, not, that's not going to be healthy for the, the longevity of your marriage. The question is when we sense that, will we push past it and say what we want to say anyway? Yeah. Wow. Or will we submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit? In the moment, it might seem a little bit uh, limited. Like you're losing. And, yeah, it might seem like you're, <laughs> you're losing. But really, the outcome of obedience is always freedom and victory. Yes. Wow. And it's hard to see that from this perspective. But if you trust God, if we trust God, then when we sense that conviction of the Holy Spirit to not say this, to not buy this, to <laughs> not eat all of this, mm -hmm. to restrain ourselves, it's because there's freedom yes. and victory that He's trying to lead us to. So, uh, why yeah. is it important to hear God? Because it changes you. Priscilla, yeah, yes. Change me. <laughs> why is it? That's right. <laughs> It does change you. You know okay, what I'll it does? You, you know what it does? Yeah. It ruins you for yeah. church as usual. Oh, mm, hey. Come it ruins on. you. Yeah. That regular old mundane Christian, read a verse a day to keep wow. the devil away, sit in church, go because my mama went, my grandmother went, this is what we do. 
all of that goes away. Okay. Because you're hungering mm. for what you know you've experienced before, actually sensing the voice Beautiful. of God, His presence near you. Listen, sometimes hearing God is less about having a specific word and more about just a nearness of His presence. Yeah. Just knowing that He's near. I'm talking about where your physical body responds to the presence of God. Mm -hmm. There are times when you know He's near because He's omnipresent. There are times where He manifests Himself in a way where the, the hair on the back of your neck yeah. stands Goosebump, out. kind of yeah. fail. Yeah. Goosebumps, yeah. yes. And in those moments, once you start sensing the nearness of God in that way, you're ruined for all just yeah, doing just stuff because so it's what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And you want a, more of that. And I think what a lot of people need to understand is He also speaks through His silence. Mm -hmm. Wow. Very much so. Mm -hmm. You know? I'm not saying anything. You know, think about the years in the world where, where you know, from the Old to the New Testament, he was just silent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And his silence means stay still. Mm -hmm. Don't move. I got you. Yeah. Does somebody your size ever feel goosebumps? Does that ever happen to you ever? <laughs> I, it, it does. Big. You know, you know, you know. I'm, I'm going to have goosebumps right now. Sitting. Oh, yeah. hey. Hey, yeah. hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Yeah. How much time do we have left in the show? They're, they're needing to get out. Okay. Um, and by the way, uh, we're going to unpack this, so get right back into the subject matter. It's an important subject matter, even yeah. the idea well, of the I think, way the publisher and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. This, is a, this is on the heart of God That's right now. Heart. This is the People month being of March. dissatisfied with the mundane. Yeah, we are, and, and aren't wanting we? wanting to hear God's voice, wanting to know, you know, I don't, I mean, you know, not what to, to eat today yeah. necessarily, mm -hmm. but needing to know to help their kids yeah. to, to their jobs there. You know, in every area of your life, I believe God is speaking or wants to speak or yes. wants to have a say. Yes. And you know, lives. I want to say too, that just that sense of dissatisfaction mm -hmm. that, that someone may be feeling that we all feel when we're going to be launched into the next level in our relationship with God. Sometimes that dissatisfaction makes us so upset and so frustrated because we just want to know the answer. We want to get to the mm -hmm. answer. But the dissatisfaction itself is a sign of God's spirit working within Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And the Best. dissatisfaction, the journey that it is going to lead you on, the lessons that are meant to be learned, they're going to be learned because the dissatisfaction sent you on a journey. Mm -hmm. The journey itself is not a waste of time. Discerning the voice of God is never something you're going to arrive at. It wow. is never something you're going to be successful at. Mm -hmm. It is going to be a journey with God as you Faith walk journey. in the oh, rhythms yes. of grace. Oh. You will be on your deathbed still wanting to know whether or not you have clearly heard the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Because we are human. Yeah. Wow. He's mysterious. He is God. And aren't we glad that he's not just a big version of us? Yeah. I don't want God to just be a big me. No. I want God to be so far beyond my yeah. imagination that I can never arrive at the knowledge of him, that I have to constantly and consistently be growing. Well, because it takes faith. That's, it does. It takes faith that's to right. say, okay, you know what? That That's why I always say if we step out in faith, kind of uh, no matter what it is, but if we walk in faith, how can we ever fail in that? That's right. That's right. If we're believing that we're doing what God's called that's right. us. And, and e we can even ask in our Yeah. Yeah. Even when we're, when we're unsure and we're unsteady, in, in, in the book, I list several of these, but I'll tell you just a couple of them. I believe that he allows us to have the mercy of confirmation. I call them the five M's of hearing God. When you sense that God is imparting something upon you, um, impressing conviction, um, uh, just a, a push towards something or away from something. Ask him for the mercy of confirmation. Yeah. He knows you're just a human. He knows that you need to make sure that his fingerprints are on this assignment before you move forward. Yeah. I believe that he honors the sincere request of his children when they say, Lord, would you just do something to confirm? Yeah. Not, not because it's the primary way you speak. I think you're speaking. Would you confirm that by some external means to point me in the right direction? Mm -hmm. And then one of the other M's is the ministry of Eli. Do you remember the little boy Samuel? He had an older, wiser guy in his life named Eli who was the one who pointed out to him that the voice you're hearing is the voice of God. Mm -hmm. You need to have a wiser, more mature believer in your life who you admire, not the car they drive, the house they live, on, live, live in, the success that they've achieved, but the ongoing conversational relationship they have with God, the victory you've seen them experience in your life. You go to them and you say, here's what I think the Lord is saying. Would you pray through this with me? I, listen, I've got those people in my life. Yeah. The majority of the things that we have done in ministry as a couple, we have not done. Um, I'm talking about big things that would have marked our lives and our children's lives. We have not done before. We have ca called people that we are submitted to their authority Ask them, would they pray through and give wow. us their wise counsel before we took a step? So we've submitted ourselves to the ministry of Eli. Yeah. 
Yeah. We've got Eli's in our life. Okay, That's we're talking good. about discerning the voice of God. We're going to be talking about it, unpacking it with Jerry and Priscilla <coughs> all hour long. Uh, this book, why don't you uh, wind back and go back to the original moment that you started thinking about writing this book. What was happening in your life? What was going on? How did this subject matter start forming? Books for most people are painful to write, uh, except Max Cato, who says it's easy, which is <laughs> not fair. He's kind of uh, different, that, though. That's, yeah. that's, that's not even, not. yeah. And Love no, Pastor it's really Matt. easy for me to write Max. books. <laughs> oh, dear. And, and so most of us would, would, I've never written a book, probably won't, but the idea, it would be painful because it's hard for me to write a letter. So um, this, this had to be a, a period of life in your life where you were going to drill down, you were going to get into this. Why this book? Why this subject matter when you wrote it? Specifically because of what your wife described a few moments ago as a dissatisfaction with my Christian life the way it was. Wow. I grew up in an incredible, wonderful, um, spirit-filled environment where my father, who started the church that I still attend to this day when I was one year old, they have been faithfully pastoring for 40 years. <laughs> and if anybody can preach the Word of God, it is Tony Evans, yes. let me tell you. <laughs> he is one of the most gifted communicators of God's Word. And I was talking to your wife earlier today and telling her that the reality is I had parents that lived the thing. I'm so grateful. Integrity and character, that's what my parents had. And so I gleaned so much of what the Word of God was, who it described God to be, what He did in the Old Testament and the New Testament. I knew all that, but felt dissatisfied because if He did that for them, then why am I not experiencing that for me? Mm. There was an unrest in my heart. I wanted more. I wanted to see and experience this God of the Bible. And it is that dissatisfaction that sent me on a, just a personal journey that connected me with people who were in different streams of the faith. And instead of closing them out, I invited in what it is that God was teaching them mm -hmm. and the ways that he had demonstrated himself to them. And by just listening and gleaning and inviting from the breadth of the body of Christ, I began to realize that there is so much more than our little box of our little stream presents to us, mm -hmm. that there is more that can be, that doesn't take away or water down what we have, but on the firm foundation of where that God has already laid in our life, there are deeper depths and there are higher heights. And so I just started walking the journey and I'm so grateful to the Lord because he um, honored my quest by again, not allowing me to be at a place where I've arrived. I'm in a, a place right now, here I am at, I wrote that book I think when I was 31 or 32, here I am at 42 years old and I'm at a place right now where I'm revisiting this whole concept because I'm needing to say, Lord, I'm at a place right now where I feel like you're silent or either my heart's hardened and I'm not hearing. So once again, Lord, I need to retrain my spiritual ears. I'm praying and saying, Lord, would you heighten my spiritual senses? You know, just like we have five physical senses, we've got spiritual sentence, Lord, senses. Lord, I need my radar to be up yeah. so that I can detect your presence and hear your voice. And I'm gonna need you to make my detectors sensitive yeah. again, Lord. And I'm entrusting that to your spirit. So it's an ongoing um, thing that is born out of those moments of unrest in our life. Which the is Lord the greatest us. gift ever. It's the greatest <laughs> gift. Yeah. It means there's a new level he wants yeah. to take you to. Okay. So I've been trying to keep myself from getting frustrated by those moments. Right. And just go with God, you know. Yeah, it's so then, good. Then so good. At, at some point, though, how is your life different? How is your life better after you hit that dissatisfaction point? started writing this book, what has changed in the 10 years for you personally? Because there could be somebody viewing going, you know, this is really too deep of a subject for me. You know, I got kids to raise and I got two jobs <laughs> and I got this and that. I, I don't have time to put into, okay, how can we make sure everyone understands this book, the contents of this book, the subject matter of hearing God's voice is something that will change their life. So yeah. take your own journey, talk to us about that. If we feel like our life is too big and too filled with the busyness of kids or business or life right now to be concerned about this topic that just seems so theoretical and sort of out there, then those very reasons are the reasons why more than anything you need to discern the voice of God. Okay. All the things that you love the most, your children, your spouse, your business, your ministry, all the things that are closest to you, 
without guidance uh, and leading from the Holy Spirit, without knowing what it is that God wants you to do, you will not be able to handle those things. I won't be able to handle those things correctly. We'll miss out on some of the biggest gifts and biggest surprises and biggest miracles that he wants to present to us because most of those hinge on us hearing a word and having faith enough to step out on the journey, just like your parents. Got it. Let me tell you what I've gained. Here's what I've gained. What I've gained is that now at 42 years old, and I say this, I say this, uh, you know, I'm stepping carefully when I say it, but at 42 years old, there are very few things that the Lord could ask me to do that I would not quickly and immediately step out to do them because I have, ha- I have such a track record with God now, even with my mistakes, but I have such a track record with God now, and I think my husband can attest to this, yeah. that I'm one of those people that if I sense the Holy Spirit is calling me to do something because of the track record mm. of seeing his faithfulness yes. time and time again step in for me when I stepped off what I thought was a ledge and it didn't look like it was good, but I had a word from the Lord and it was confirmed in his word and by leadership in my life. So I just went ahead and I did it anyway and I watched him catch me and I watched him take me to a place that I never could have gotten in my own giftings or my own talent or my own skill. You watch him do that enough times, you get to the place that when God asks you to do it again, you, you can't wait to step off the ledge. Yeah. Yeah. I you're need so, that another word. Yeah, let's right. go. Yeah. I'm let's so excited done. to see what's yeah. next in the journey. Wow. So I get excited now about hearing a word from God. I, I don't allow myself to become discouraged when I feel like he's silent. I assume that that means the last word I had. Stay, stay with the last word. Stay right there. Still Keep do being that. obedient to the okay, assignment. Do me a favor. Uh, just uh, let's let's for somebody that still is going, yeah, that's good for you folks that are on television. Right. <laughs> you don't know what it's like out here, you know, and all this. And, and you know, you're all up there in your suit and you're all looking good and smelling good and all that kind of stuff. No one's it's really qualified. rough out here. Think of the people in, you know, foreign par- you know, parts of the world, of yeah. Indonesia and, 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 and Africa that are watching tonight. They're just, they're struggling to get by. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Why don't you... God- Talk to them. Too. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Would it happen? Yeah. Think of think of them in in regard to that. And if you would look at them and maybe pray for them, Priscilla. Let me just say this oh, first please. of all, and I want to talk to those people. Please. I'm the youngest of three. Okay. Grew up in a single parent home. My mother had to sack groceries, work for tips only to put food on the table. But I remember nights I couldn't sleep and get up. I saw her praying on her knees. For her, it was how bad she wanted it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I tell people all the time how the prayers of one woman change the entire generation. Wow. So. Yeah. And so God speaks to us no matter what ailments we have, no matter how devastating those seasons of life are where we feel like we are completely overwhelmed. We don't have what it's going to take to sustain our current needs. And we're wondering if God hears. We're wondering whether or not our prayers matter. We're wondering whether or not he is ever going to speak into and change and alter our circumstances. But one of the greatest gifts, I think, from Scripture is not His voice. It's not what He can give us. It's just Him. Yeah. Mm. Seek Him. He will disclose more and more to you in terms of His will, His plans for your life, His gifts, His blessings. Those are a benefit of just having Him. And you need to know that He'll never leave you. He will never forsake you, no matter how devastating things might become. Um, And I know there are some very real practical needs And so I want to pray for those right now. I want to pray that the Lord will manifest himself to you in a tangible way that will keep you hope-filled, encouraged, and excited to continue your relationship with the Lord uh, despite external circumstances. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, I pray for my sister and brothers all around the world. I'm asking right now in Jesus' name that you would bring encouragement. You would replace discouragement Mm -hmm. with encouragement. Lord, I'm going to ask right now in Jesus' name that you would build up somebody's faith today by manifesting yourself in their life, Lord. I'm asking you to speak to them a still small voice, Lord, or let the scriptures fall open to a page of of, of your word, Lord, that is so evidently, so clearly for them that they will never doubt again that they have not heard from you and experienced you. Lord, Lord, I'm asking that the church they attend would be on fire with your spirit, that every time they and the others that go there would walk through 
through the door, they would have a tangible sense of your presence with them. Lord, I pray that your word would be alive. I pray that the assignment of the enemy against them, against their children, against their spouses, Lord, that those assignments would be canceled and that they would see those assignments replaced by um, your grace, your love, and your mercy washing over them and their experience. Lord, meet us. Speak to us, Lord. We need a word from you. And so we ask, Lord, that you would bring uh, your word to your people and speak clearly so that we can hear. Thank you, Jesus. Lift the veil from our eyes. Thank you, Lord. Cause the veil that is over our ears, the hardness of our heart, Lord, to be softened yes. and to be removed so that we have tender sensors that are able to detect your presence. Mm -hmm. We need you, Lord. And so we ask you to speak. Mm -hmm. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Wow. <clears throat> Oh, wow, wow, wow. I love what you said about your mama. You know, the need for God. So many of us, we need something new yeah, in our life. We yeah. need God. And, and I think that dissatisfaction leads us to a place of seeking. Yeah. You know, and I think being a seeker is one of the greatest things mm -hmm. that could ever happen to us because there's a lot of people sitting in church that aren't seeking God anymore. Yeah. But there's a lot of people out in the world that haven't found God yet and God hasn't found them that are seeking. And mm -hmm. you seek and you're going to find them. That's right. You know, that's so right. I think that's a, a, that's a good thing. If you've got um, children that are seeking God, you, you need to pray for your kids that God brings that person or something into their lives that, that draws them to God. That's because right. I think that's a very open season of their life was when they're seeking God. Totally. How do you know? Um, so, so... I know that a lot of um, people want to hear God's voice, but they won't stop talking. <laughs> right? Tell us how That's important never been it is. my problem. <laughs> Just stop talking. <laughs> yeah. We have turned prayer into this one-way monologue. Wow. Where we're just, you know, just feeling like we have to fill in the no of the silence, any quiet spaces. We've just got to fill them in with our next request or the next thing that we want to say. And you're right, we don't leave room for God to get a word in edgewise. But one of the authors that I remember reading, Bob Sorge, I believe his name is, he said, uh, nothing happens when I speak. But when God speaks, worlds come into existence. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so why in the world wouldn't I want to leave time for him to speak? And what that practically looks like is, yes, vocalize your prayers to him. I literally have kind of begun the habit of even writing some down, just writing down what it is that I want to say to the Lord. Yes, we have the privilege of bringing our needs and our requests to him. But there ought to be at some point where you just pause and you say, okay, Lord, is there anything you want to say to me? Most of the time, he'll speak to us just through his word, through whatever you're reading in your Bible time that day. He knows how to match up what you're going to be reading today with what the needs of your life or your future are that you might not even be aware of yet. So in his word, that is how most of the time he speaks back to us. But oftentimes, it's just an impression. It's just a Bible verse from that you learned in Sunday school years ago. All of a sudden, it comes back to your, your mind now. Take that as God speaking to you, or the name of a friend you haven't talked to in years. Take that as God saying, pray for this friend right yeah. now. Those little impressions, those little inklings. You know, Deuteronomy chapter 30 says, God's word is not so hard that you've got to send someone above the heavens to go find it for you mm -hmm. or through the seas to go and get it for you. God's word is in your own heart. It's in your own, it is as close as your fingertips. All of that stuff that we discount as our own ideas, oh, that's just coincidence. Most of the time, for the believer, for the one who is seeking God's will and his voice, most of the time that's God's word. Take it seriously. Write it down. Ask him for confirmation. Treasure his word and see if he doesn't show you how important and palatable it is in terms of the experience that he has planned for you. We are talking with Jerry Again. and Priscilla Shire, discerning the voice of God. You know, it's, um, you know it, it, it couldn't be any more important, this subject matter. I mean, the very fact that the four of us are sitting in a studio uh, doing this broadcast is because discerning the voice of God came to Paul and Jan Crouch 40-something years ago, and TBN is his thing. This isn't something that the Crouch family built. Uh, this is something God did, yeah. and, and the idea, um, you know, that's why it's almost comical when people try to rise up against something that God did. It's just kind of, <laughs> kind of funny. You know, it can be irritating for a season, but it's, it's almost comical yeah. uh, because 
uh, if we thought that this ministry and as it is now fully in its second generation, we're up to us, we'd quit. It's not up to us, it's God's thing. Yeah. And so we have that same firm foundation of understanding. And, and oftentimes people will say, well, you know, everything's different for you and everything's different for these smiling faces on, on television. You don't understand what it's like, you know, in the real world. And well, <laughs> the problem is, is uh, the Crouch family, the Shire family, and, you know, the Evans family were all just normal people till we heard the voice of the Lord. And then that's what changed. If there is a difference, it's because of his voice. Mm. There couldn't be a more important subject matter for you. Uh, and Jerry, I'm circling back to you just for a second because of what you said. So it, it's not an economic thing. It, it isn't just, you know, uh, executives that the Lord speaks to. Your mama uh, needed the voice of the Lord and apparently was struggling in a single family situation. So it worked and it worked for your mama. Yes. You're absolutely right. I remember her coming home with her tips <laughs> and, and say she made $40 in tips that day. All right. I remember her taking out $4, yep. you know, putting it to the side because that was going to go into the offering plate. That's an, I mean, I'm like, Mom, are, are you kidding me? We, you know, the Lord would understand. <laughs> <laughs> she, would, she goes, no, it's just, she goes, it's just simple obedience. Mm. So it had nothing to do with that. And then I remember her, like I said, getting up early, praying. I remember there were situations I was in off in college that some of my boys and I, we would go do something. And there was this, this, this thing in me, like, you know what, Jerry, don't go. You know what? Uh, 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 no. That was the time my mom was praying for me. So she has kept me out of so much situation through her prayers. That's why I said the prayers, how the prayers of one woman changed the generation. I mean, still today, it's so funny, our boys will be like, is Granny still praying? She'll be in there praying for 30 <laughs> minutes. I'm like, yep, she's still in there praying. I said, she's praying for you guys. So she's praying even for this next generation, her grandchildren. Yeah, so and so it's just great. But yeah, it is not an economical thing. It is, it is, a, a, it is something that you desire. Do you really want it? Like I said, she used to get up early in the morning before the kids got up on her knees, praying for her children, praying for the day, praying for whatever. So, you know, you make time for what you want. Yeah. And if you want to hear the voice of God, you got to make time for him. Yeah. Okay. Now we, we, the four of us, grew up in an environment where this subject matter is normal. Mm -hmm. yeah. this, un this, this is understood. We get this. There are people that grew up in the opposite, polar opposite of totally. that, and they don't get it. This book... You know, it, the title is Discerning the Voice of God, How to Recognize When God is Speaking, okay? So there could be, you know, why don't you start with, you know, just uh, speak to the people that are new Christians, they didn't grow up, they don't have no examples in their life of this happening, this isn't normal, they and sounds, crazy. sounds <laughs> like it's not right, that yeah. we're not right. I okay. do sound a little yeah. crazy, don't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, just introduce the subject matter if yeah. somebody just doesn't quite get it. Okay. So John 10, 27 to me is the most concise and comprehensive verse in scripture about hearing God. Uh, it is when Jesus says, my sheep Amen. hear my voice. Mm. I know them and they follow me. He says, you got to be my sheep to hear my voice. Mm. So you said new Christians. Listen, that relationship right there is the the connector that allows you access to the voice of God. So, so to me, the first step is actually believing that as an adopted son or daughter grafted into the family of God, that you have the capacity innately because you're part of the family to now hear the voice of God. It's like um, when we were growing up in our house, I don't know about you guys, but we didn't have access to a whole lot of cable television. My parents yeah. didn't get cable. They didn't get, you know, right. whatever, direct TV, all that stuff. We didn't have any of that stuff. Right. And <laughs> I, I felt a little mad about that. I really wanted to have more channels. My parents chose that we could really only watch the Cosby show on Thursdays at <laughs> seven o'clock and then a different world. So it wasn't until we were, we were getting ready to get married. I moved out. Um, I remember the day I had the cable guy come over, hook up the cable. And after he did all that hooking up, he said, here's the remote control, push the guide button. And I pushed the guide button. At, I had never seen so many channels in my life on the screen. I had no idea all those channels were there. Now, all those channels didn't just get created that day, yeah. they had always been there. It's just I didn't have the right hookup so that I could tap into them wow. and bring them and draw them down into my experience. The Holy Spirit is the hookup. Mm. 
Yeah. There you when go. you place faith in Jesus Christ, Ephesians chapter one says, the moment you believe, you receive the hookup, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now you are able to draw down divine channels. It's not that you created them. No, they were always there. God speaking. Mm -hmm. He wants to reveal himself. Now you have the, the opportunity to hear him. So really the first step, especially if you grew up in an environment where this concept is sort of um, unique and different and new for you, it's to believe that as a, as a privilege of being a son or a daughter, you can hear from God. Beautiful. It is the deception of the enemy to cause us to think we have to have a seminary deg degree, mm -hmm. we have to have some special hotline connection with God like somebody we may admire, that we as regular men and women can't hear from God. That's what the enemy wants you to think. Right. He doesn't want you to know it's your birthright. And so believing that you can is the first step to hearing God.